Chapter 7, Miss Honey, Part 2. Miss Honey took a deep breath and let it out slowly. She looked again at the small girl with bright eyes standing beside her desk so sensible and solemn. You say you don't find it difficult to multiply one number by another, Miss Honey said. Could you try to explain that a little bit? Oh dear, Matilda said. I'm not really sure. Miss Honey waited. The class was silent, all listening. For instance, Miss Honey said, if I asked you to multiply 14 by 19, no, that's too difficult. It's 266, Matilda said softly. Miss Honey stared at her. Then she picked up a pencil and quickly worked out the sum on a piece of paper. What did you say it was? she said, looking up. 266, Matilda said. Miss Honey put down her pencil and removed her spectacles and began polishing the lenses with a piece of tissue. The class remained quiet, watching her and waiting for what was coming next. Matilda was still standing up beside her desk. Now tell me, Matilda, Miss Honey said, still polishing. Try to tell me exactly what goes on inside your head when you get a multiplication like that to do. You obviously have to work it out in some way, but you seem to be able to arrive at the answer almost instantly. Take the one you've just done, 14 multiplied by 19. I, I, I simply put the 14 down in my head and multiply it by 19, Matilda said. I'm afraid I don't know how else to explain it. I've always said to myself that if a little pocket calculator can do it, why shouldn't I? Why not indeed, Miss Honey said. The human brain is an amazing thing. I think it's a lot better than a lump of metal, Matilda said. That's all a calculator is. How right you are, Miss Honey said. Pocket calculators are not allowed in this school anyway. Miss Honey was feeling quite quivery. There was no doubt in her mind that she had met a truly extraordinary mathematical brain, and words like child genius and prodigy went flitting through her head. She knew that these sort of wonders do pop up in the world from time to time, but only once or twice in a hundred years. After all, Mozart was only five when he started composing for the piano, and look what happened to him. It's not fair, Lavender said. How can she do it and we can't? Don't worry, Lavender. You'll soon catch up, Miss Honey said, lying through her teeth. At this point, Miss Honey could not resist the temptation of exploring still further the mind of this astonishing child. She knew that she ought to be paying some attention to the rest of the class, but she was altogether too excited to let the matter rest. Well, she said, pretending to address the whole class, let us leave sums for a moment and see if any of you have begun to learn to spell. Hands up, anyone who can spell cat. Three hands went up. They belonged to Lavender, a small boy called Nigel, and to Matilda. Spell cat, Nigel. Nigel spelled it. Miss Honey now decided to ask a question that normally she would not have dreamed of asking the class on its first day. I wonder, she said, whether any of you three who know how to spell cat have learned how to read a whole group of words when they are strung together in a sentence. I have, Nigel said. So have I, Lavender said. Miss Honey went to the blackboard and wrote with her white chalk the sentence, I have already begun to learn how to read long sentences. 
She had purposely made it difficult, and she knew that there were precious few five-year-olds around who would be able to manage it. Can you tell me what that says, Nigel? she asked. That's too hard, Nigel said. Lavender? The first word is I, Lavender said. Can any of you read the whole sentence? Miss Honey asked, waiting for the yes that she felt certain was going to come from Matilda. Yes, Matilda said. Go ahead, Miss Honey said. Matilda read the sentence without any hesitation at all. That really is very good indeed, Miss Honey said, making the understatement of her life. How much can you read, Matilda? I think I can read most things, Miss Honey, Matilda said, although I'm afraid I can't always understand the meanings. Miss Honey got to her feet and walked smartly out of the room, but was back in 30 seconds carrying a thick book. She opened it at a random, at random and placed it on Matilda's desk. This is a book of humorous poetry, she said. See if you can read that one aloud. Smoothly, without a pause, and at a nice speed, Matilda began to read. An epicure dining at Crewe found a rather large mouse in his stew, cried the waiter, don't shout, and wave it about, or the rest will be wanting one too. Several children found the found, several children saw the funny side of the rhyme and laughed. Miss Honey said, "Do you know what an epicure is, Matilda?" "It is someone who is dainty with his eating," Matilda said. "That is correct," Miss Honey said. "And do you happen to know what that particular type of poetry is called?" It's called a limerick, Matilda said. That's a lovely one. It's so funny. It's a famous one, Miss Honey said, picking up the book and returning to her table in front of the class. A witty limerick is very hard to write, she added. They look easy, but they most certainly are not. I know, Matilda said. I've tried quite a few times, but mine are never any good. You have, have you? Miss Honey said, more startled than ever. Well, Matilda, I would very much like to hear one of these limericks you say you have written. Could you try to remember one for us? Well, Matilda said, hesitating. I've actually been trying to make one up about you, Miss Honey, while we've been sitting here. About me? Miss Honey cried. <laughs> Well, we've certainly got to hear that one, haven't we? I don't think I want to say it, Miss Honey. Please tell it, Miss Honey said. I promise I won't mind. I think you will, Miss Honey, because I have to use your first name to make things rhyme, and that's why I don't want to say it. How do you know my first name, Miss Honey asked. I heard another teacher calling you by it just before we came in. Matilda said. She called you Jenny. I insist upon hearing this limerick, Miss Honey said, smiling one of her rare smiles. Stand up and recite it. Reluctantly, meaning she didn't really want to, reluctantly Matilda stood up and very slowly, very nervously, she recited her limerick. The thing we all ask about Jenny is surely there cannot be many young girls in the place with so lovely a face. The answer to that is not any. The whole of Miss Honey's pale and pleasant face blushed a brilliant scarlet. Then once again she smiled. It was a much broader one this time. A smile of pure pleasure. Why, thank you, Matilda, she said, still smiling. Although it is not true, it is, a really, it is really a very good limerick. Oh dear, oh dear, I must try to remember that one. From the third row of desks, Lavender said, 
It's good. I like it. It's true as well, a small boy called Rupert said. Of course it's true, Nigel said. Already the whole class had begun to warm towards Miss Honey, although as yet she had hardly taken any notice of any of them except Matilda. Who taught you to read, Matilda? Miss Honey asked. I just sort of taught myself, Miss Honey. And have you read any books all by yourself? Any children's books, I mean? I've read all the ones that are in the public library in the high street, Miss Honey. And did you like them? I liked some of them very much indeed, Matilda said, but I thought others were fairly dull. Tell me one that you liked. I liked The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, Matilda said. I think Mr. C.S. Lewis is a very good writer, but he has one failing. There are no funny bits in his books. You are right there, Miss Honey said. There aren't many funny books in Mr. Tolkien either, Matilda said. Do you think that all children's books ought to have funny bits in them, Miss Honey asked. I do, Matilda said. Children are not so serious as grown-ups, and they love to laugh. Miss Honey was astounded by the wisdom of this tiny girl. She said, And what are you going to do now that you've read all the children's books? I am reading other books, Matilda said. I borrow them from the library. Mrs. Phelps is very kind to me. She helps me choose them. Miss Honey was leaning far forward over her work table and gazing in wonder at the child. She had completely forgotten now about the rest of the class. What other books? she murmured. I am very fond of Charles Dickens, Matilda said. He makes me laugh a lot, especially Mr. Pickwick. At that moment, the bell in the corridor sounded for the end of class. Hmm.